Hello, welcome to this video. Today, uh, I just want to go over a f one example and talk of, uh, about a couple of polar equation graphs. And specifically, I want to show you how to graph a rose. Um, so I've got an example of a rose here. Uh, I'm going to do one example and then I'll show you the, the formulas, kind of give you an idea of what they are, um, how to identify what a rose is. But I want you to be able to at least sketch the graph using your own values here. So we know that this right here is a, a polar graph and it's given with the, this is a rose because a rose has a number inside of the cosine multiplied by the theta, just very quickly. Here are the three types of uh, polar graphs that we see most often. We see a cardioid where these two numbers are the same, so four plus four sine theta. This is a cardioid. Uh, Limousin looks like this. This is one with an inner loop and they have two different numbers. Cosine or sine. Now cosine, you notice here, is going to be uh, reflected around the x-axis here. It's going to have symmetry around the x-axis, and sine here is going to have symmetry around the y-axis, so you can always see which one you're dealing with, depending on uh, whether it's symmetric about the x or the y-axis. And then uh, here is a rose, and a rose looks like this has a number. Um, this will be the length of the um, length of each petal. And the n tells you the number of, of petals that you have. So if n is odd, then you have n petals. If n is even, then you have two n petals. So notice here that um, in this equation, and in case this is too small, you can't see it, um, this is r equals four cosine four theta n is 4, so 4 times 2, since it's even, is 8. We should have 8 petals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we know that this is cosine because you see our first, uh, our first petal here. Our first petal here is symmetric about the x-axis. Okay. All right, so let's go back and take a look at how, do we, how are we going to graph this on our own. By hand, without a calculator. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we need to find values of theta. We're always going to start with zero. And what I recommend is that for a rose, you just write up here your principal values on the axis in your unit circle. So this is zero. This is pi over two. This is pi. This is three pi over two. And then this is two pi again. Okay, so we got two pi and zero here. So we're going to go zero pi over two pi 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Then we're going to take each of these numbers and divide it by n. Okay, so I'll say that one more time. Take these and divide by n. So 0 divided by 2 is 0. Pi over 2 divided by 2. Pi over 2 divided by 2. Okay, it's pi over 2 divided by 2. Pi over 2 times 1 half, which is pi over 4. Okay, so this is pi over 4. Okay, I'm not going to do all this work out for each of them, but I want you to see how this worked out. So uh, pi divided by 2 is pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 divided by 2 is 3 pi over 4. 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. And I want to continue this pattern at least for at least until I get to 2 pi. So I've got 0 pi over 4 pi over 2 3 pi over 4 pi. So our next one if we're if we're thinking about the unit circle okay, we're going um, pi over 4 then pi over 2 then 3 pi over 4 then pi then pi then 5 pi over 4 then down here is 3 pi over 2 then over here is 7 pi over 4, and then we're going to go to 2 pi. Notice here that the pattern is that we're just basically looking at the pi over 4s. So what that's going to do, and you'll see this pattern emerge when you're doing more of these problems. So we're going to plug in 0 in for theta, and we're going to have 5 cosine of 2 times 0 is 5 cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so we're going to get 5. 
okay? Because we have the point right here is one comma zero right? on the unit circle. All right, so then we're gonna plug pi over four in for theta. So we're gonna have five cosine of two times pi over four, which is gonna be five cosine of pi over two. And cosine of pi over two is gonna give me zero. Zero times five is zero. This is zero. I'm gonna do this one here. Five times the cosine of two times pi over two is equal to five times the cosine, the twos cancel out, and then we're gonna get pi. Cosine of pi is negative one, so I'm gonna have negative five. Now I want you to notice something here. When I plugged in pi over four, the two canceled out and gave me pi over two, which is what I started with here. When I plugged in pi over two, the twos cancel out and then I got pi. If I plug three pi over four, what's gonna happen? Yes, you guessed it. It's going to be three pi over two. Well, look at that. And you might actually start to see a pattern emerge. Well, it should emerge, right? We've got something that's symmet symmetrical and, per and periodic right, with a cosine. So let's go ahead and once we've got all these in here, we're gonna graph it. So we're gonna go zero radian, zero radians and five, right? One, two, three, four, five. Let's plot this point here. Then pi over four now and this, this we can't really see, it's right in the middle here. So I, I, I should have um, I should have gotten one of these that was a little bit better, but I'll go and draw it in the middle. And I'll draw each of these so that we have them here. Oh, come on. All right, so these are pi over four guys here. Okay, so this one is gonna be pi over four. This is uh, three pi over four. This is five pi over four. And this is seven pi over four. Okay. So uh, we're gonna go zero, that's gonna come back. So I actually probably didn't even need to draw this because it looks like every time we're at a pi over four, we're back at zero, right? So let's go pi over two and then negative five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so I'm gonna start here. And remember, I'm gonna curve counterclockwise till I get there. And then I'm gonna curve counterclockwise to the next point, and I'm coming back to zero, so curve counterclockwise into zero. Where am I now? It's right here, so let me go pi and five, so this is pi, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so then I'm gonna come out here. Remember, again, just keep going counter counterclockwise, all right? We wanna go counterclockwise this way, keep turning this way, turning this way to the next point. And we're gonna go back to zero here. It looks like we're gonna be at pi, three pi over two and negative five. Here's three pi over two, negative five is back this way. One, two, three, four, five. And go towards it like that. Looks like we're gonna come back now. Seven pi over four, zero. And then two pi is over here, we're back to five. Oops, come out a little bit more there. And we've got our flat, our rows. Okay, so there's our rows, and it's a four petal rose. Remember, we're dealing with cosine, so we should have something that's symmetric, symmetric about the x axis and y axis for that matter. Um, but if we had a sign here, we would have started, we probably would have started out here at this pi over four, and been out here at this one, two, three, four. So I'll just draw that in blue for you. If we had um, r equals five sine two theta, then the values that I would have ended up with would have given me, um, uh, it would have given me something that looks like this. That. Then up here. And then out here little skinnier than I wanted it to be, but you kind of get the gist of it. And then out here and back, okay? So this would have been five sine two theta. Notice that it's not symmetric around the x-axis, it's symmetric around the 
the y-axis, but it actually starts kind of in, in the quadrants first, where the cosine usually starts on the x-axis first, okay? So uh, that's graphing a rows. A couple things I want you to remember when you come into class tomorrow, or if you're not in my class that you, you're hopefully getting out of this, is a rows, remember, has um, n petals if n is odd, and 2n petals if n is even. Okay, that's important to know. And then remember that what you want to take these, these, oops, uh, you want to take these guys right here, all right? And you want to make sure that these are the guys that you take and divide by this number in here. If this was a 3, I would have divided by 3. If this was an 8, I would have divided these by 8. But then, luckily enough, it just gives us back to those starting points. And you'll see a pattern for these roses. It'll almost always be 5, 0, negative 5, 0, 5, 0, okay, depending if it's a negative or positive or cosine or sine, okay? But the, the pattern is pretty nice once you get a hang of it, okay? So get some practice with that, and that's it for me. Um, good luck.